Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as always is my sidekick, the Boogeyman. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Wahoo Element Cycling Computer. And sorry for the somewhat provocative title of this video, but the truth is we are both converting from Garmin units and we're both kind of tired of our Garmin units. So yeah, we're really good. We're switching. Um, I, spoiler alert, we actually really like the Wahoo Element. We're going to talk through some of the things about how it compares with uh, the Garmin systems that we've been using and what we like about the Wahoo Element. We're also going to be pointing out some of the, the issues that we have with the Wahoo Element, although they tend to be a little on the small side. They're just small nitpicks here and there. Uh, we'll, we'll point out some of those as well. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and talk about the size and the weight of this unit. I've got an assortment of Garmin uh, cycling computers. Of course, Garmin being somewhat the uh, industry leader. Everybody knows of Garmin. Everybody's familiar with Garmin. So we're going to do some direct comparisons to the Garmin cycling computers. I've got with me a 500, a 510, both of which are somewhat older, and the 1000, which is uh, be going to become some, uh, somewhat older soon with the release of the Garmin 1100. One other thing that people talk about a lot with regards to the Garmin 1000 in particular, and again, I'm really trying to compare those two because this is Garmin's top of the line, but uh, is, is screen size. So the Garmin 1000, some people really like the screen size. It's big. Um, some people really don't like the screen size. It's big. Uh, well, the Wahoo actually has almost exactly the same screen size. Of course, the difference is um, this is not a touch screen. This one is. Uh, that being said, I don't really like the Garmin touch screen. It doesn't work in most cases. It works fine if your hands are hot and sweaty, but if you've got cold hands and wearing gloves, good luck. It's just, it's difficult to work with. Um, it's, it's okay. Uh, the 510, even worse uh, from the touchscreen perspective, so the 1000 is pretty good as far as that concern, is concerned in comparison. This does not have a touchscreen. Instead, it has a series of soft buttons, which you can see across the bottom here, and there's a power button on the side and a up-down button over here. Uh, so, in general, it uses the screen very well, the real estate within the screen. It also has these LEDs, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, but these LEDs light up to tell you various things. Across the top, it'll tell you when you need to turn. And in fact, this device does have turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Some people say it doesn't. I've seen statements on the internet that say that it does not have turn-by-turn -turn navigation, but it does. Uh, it actually does a very good job at that. Uh, if you don't want it to obscure your entire, entire screen like the Garmin 1000 does when a turn is coming up, it'll light up the bars to tell you which direction you need to turn. And across the bottom, it may take away your bottom row or two of data fields, but it'll tell you what street you need to turn on, which direction, and how far that is. Unlike the Garmin where the screen pops up, takes away all of your data fields, and it tells you when you have to turn. Even when there's actually not a turn there, it's just like, oh, make a right turn. No, the road's going to the right. I don't, I don't need the screen to go away. Uh, I don't like looking at my computer screen that much. So if I don't have to have stare at something and try to figure it out or mess with it while I'm riding, that makes me happy. And frankly, this makes me happy. Now the Boogeyman is coming from a Garmin 510. And the reason that he switched from the Garmin 510 is actually quite simple. For some strange reason, uh, it kind of took a dump on him. Not literally, thankfully. Uh, but it pretty much stopped. And it decided to say that it didn't want to save any more of his rides. It didn't want to upload his rides anymore. And I think it said that he was somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 kilograms in weight. No matter what we did, we couldn't get it to not say he was 1,500 kilograms. We would go ahead and reset it. And it would come back and say he's 1,500 kilograms again. And it would say that he was... I think seven feet tall. So um, he must have grown quite a bit. I'm not even sure why a cycling computer would have 1,500 kilograms as an option for how to set. I mean, that just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. He's not the weight of a Ferrari, uh, and he's certainly not seven plus feet tall. So uh, one of the biggest issues that we both have had is that our Garmin computers have kind of uh, dropped on us in, in numerous occasions. So in fact, I'm going to show you a few of the Garmins that have failed on us in the past. This is my original Garmin 500, and it failed me by, uh, at some point in time, it just decided it wasn't gonna upload rides anymore. No matter what I did, I would do the ride, and it would save the file as a FIT file, but I had to manually go in and copy the FIT file off, and after a while, the FIT files actually started becoming corrupted. 
Uh, this is one of the two Garmin 510s we have, and both of them have failed, and similar things. They've stopped uploading rides, they won't allow you to save settings, uh, and then the Garmin 1000 you see later on in this video, which I've actually gotten rid of now, um, it just stopped seeing my Stages power meter. Just completely stopped. It had been working all along and then decided, no, I'm not going to see your Stages power meter anymore. Uh, shame on me, I, I did all the testing I could and, and thought that it was my Stages because I just assumed it was my power meter. And Stages was great. They took my power meter back, swapped it out, well, a brand new one, wouldn't see my Garmin 1000 and vice versa. Uh, actually, I would see it, I compare it just fine, but as soon as I started riding, it said I had zero cadence and zero power, which was very frustrating. Uh, and since then, we've put the uh, Wahoo Element with it, and it works like a champ. So, um, there's a reason that we're both looking at Wahoo Elements here, and that's because, well, frankly, uh, we want to give somebody else a chance. Okay, let's talk some essential functions here. Now, you notice the backlight actually just turned off. Uh, to turn the backlight on, much like the Garmin devices, you simply press the power button, and from here you get into your basic setup screen. And I say basic because uh, you really don't have many options on this uh, screen overall. Most of your setup is going to take place in the Wahoo app. So in this case, I'm turning the backlight on so you can see this while I'm working on it, uh, but normally I would just go ahead and keep it on a five second. Unless I'm outside at night, I might keep it on the entire time. Uh, during our ride today, I was able to clearly see it without any backlight on, no problem. Plenty of contrast. Uh, this is also where you pair sensors. Probably one of the easiest pairing processes I've ever had. You simply scroll down to add sensor. You press add and it tells you to place the device next to the sensor. You hold it there. Sometimes within three seconds it picks it up. Other times maybe a couple, maybe 15 seconds or so. It picks it up and no problem. It adds the sensor, and it has this pool of sensors. So if you have multiple bikes, uh, like we do, you know, if you've got a mountain bike, a road bike, a rain bike, or whatever, and you've got multiple sensors, it just has a pool of sensors in whichever one you hop on, it recognizes it, and you're good to go. Pairing a phone is actually super easy. You simply press the pair button. It's the center soft button here, and a QR code comes up, and that QR code you scan with your phone. You load the app, you scan that with the phone, everything's paired, and then you're ready to start setting things up with your app. Of course, system information, that's just your everyday things like uh, your version number, how much free space you have. It's a decent amount of free space. It's got maps of the entire world, well, a lot of the world, uh, and you still have almost 300 megabytes left. Unlike this, where you ride two, 300 times and your memory's completely full and you're out of luck. This has plenty of free space as well. This has even a little bit more. So given how easy and cheap it is to have memory nowadays, I just don't understand why it is these things don't come loaded with memory. So you can do check for updates. And of course, when you sync this to your phone, you can also set up things like Wi-Fi. So you can have it set up to automatically connect to your home Wi-Fi system. Great news because as soon as you pull into your house, it automatically uploads your ride. If you have it paired to your phone and your phone is actually connected while you're paired to it, when you stop your ride, it uploads the ride. So if you link the account to Strava, it automatically up uploads your, your ride. If you have starred segments on Strava, you can automatically track those while you're riding. Frankly, I hate doing that because then it pops stuff up on your screen. When this one tracks your live segments, it takes away your entire screen just to tell you where you are. You don't get to see your power. You don't get to see your speed. You get to see where you are compared to some person who has the KOM. I don't like that. I want to be able to see what my power is. If I'm doing a 20 minute climb and I'm going for a KOM, I need to be tracking my power. This one doesn't take as much information away from you, but regardless, I don't like tracking live segments. I know what I can do, what I can't do. So back to the main screen here. This screen, unlike the Garmin, where you set everything up in the computer itself, inside the trip computer, this is all set up on your phone. So to me, that's a little easier. You can set it up anytime you want, and the next time you sync your phone, everything changes. You don't have to have your Garmin handy. So you can go through these and determine what fields you want, what order you want them in, and it's on that uh, screen. It doesn't have superfluous pages either, which is great. I love that. My Garmin, for some reason, there's pages I've never told it to put in there, but it insists on putting those pages in there. So if I want to swipe past them, I've just got to keep going past. I've told it to enable three pages. There's a total of eight pages that I have to scroll through. I never told it to have eight. I told it to have three. This one, I can turn off whatever pages I don't want. I can add whatever pages I want and it's easy. So here's your primary page. Nice thing about this, like I said, I don't like trying to look for numbers on my computer. What I've done is I've simply put my most important items at the top, and if I want, I can simply 
press the side button, and all that's doing is it's magnifying those fields so it makes them bigger. So if I'm in a race and I just want to see my power, my speed, and how much distance and time I've ridden, then I zoom in on those and that's all I see and it's in big numbers. I can glance down and see it. I don't have to stare at my computer and, you know, get killed. Zoom right back out as well. You can set up as many screens as you want or as few screens as you want. Frankly, I just like having it right there. And then if I need a couple other things, like I've got a, a summary screen, which tells me my average miles per hour, max heart rate, max, uh, max speed, averages and maxes, basically. That's a great screen just so I can, you know, if I'm in a long ride and I just want to see, I can go back and look and see what, I, uh, what my averages have been over time. One pet peeve about this is the only way to get from page to page is to press this bottom button. There's nothing wrong with that. That's actually nice. It's, it's got a very positive feel to the button. The only downside is you can only go that way with the screens. You can't come back. So you have to cycle through all of your screens. Uh, very small pet peeve, but that is a pet peeve that I have with this. So my plan for comparing these two units was actually pretty simple uh, from a side-by-side -side perspective. What, and what I was going to do is I was going to do this great video shot using the GoPro, shooting down both screens. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, we did a ride today, and actually I'm just going to go ahead and upload the footage from it. But we did a ride today and uh, this crazy thing appeared in the Washington sky called the sun. So it created this reflection, and well, the video doesn't work as you can see here. We're both so uh, sponsored on a team uh, by Stages, and I like Stages power meters. I think they're great power meters. In fact, we're going to have a review coming up of our Stages power meters shortly. But the Garmin 1000 and the Stages power meters do not play well together. They placed the sensor for the Amp Plus radio here behind a metal shield on the back of the Garmin 1000, and when you put that in a clip, it makes it almost impossible for the Stages power meter and the Garmin 1000 to talk to each other. Now, other power meters don't have the problem. That's because Stages turned their amplifier down on their Amp Plus radio. Well, they have a Bluetooth radio as well, and this is capable of doing Bluetooth and Amp Plus. Uh, the Wahoo comes with a, an arrow bar mount, so if you happen to have out front arrow bars, uh, you want to put it on a time trial machine, this setup works. I wouldn't really try to use this setup on regular handlebars because it'll, you'll have to orient your uh, Wahoo the wrong direction. It also comes with a standard stem mount. Uh, this is a little different from the, the Garmin version in that it requires you to use zip ties, which is kind of uh, lame, uh, versus the um, O-ring rubber band style, which is also lame, but a little bit less lame. Uh, it also comes with an out front mount. Now, the trick is you can't use the Garmin mounts that you've got. So if you've already got a half a dozen Garmin mounts that you've been trading around your bikes, maybe you purchased one and tried it and whatever, it's just not gonna work. First of all, uh, the pegs are a little bit different size or the pins are a little bit different size on the back, oftentimes referred to as the ears. Uh, they're just a tad the wrong size. Um, which makes it really infuriating because you just feel like you can just jam it in there and it just doesn't go. But on top of that, you'll notice this is the out front mount and this is the stem mount. This is the Garmin, this is the Wahoo. Notice the ears are oriented in a different direction. So even if you do have one of these and you do manage to get it on there, it's gonna have to be one of these that's reversible or you're not gonna be able to mount that. So if you wanna get creative, take an X-Acto knife to it or sandpaper and uh, make it fit, go for it. But it needs to be reversible or floppable or this thing is not going to be in the correct orientation. To get a route onto the device, for the Garmin, it's actually kind of a convoluted process. You have to download a GPX file uh, and then you have to open up the Garmin on your computer, go into uh, a couple different subfolders and then drop it into the new files folder. Then you have to eject it and then hope that it didn't corrupt the file in the process and it'll load up your, cor uh, your courses. For this, if you have a Ride with GPS account or a Strava account and you've created a course there and you have that in your saved courses, it automatically syncs with that. So it just pulls down all of your previous courses. What's really cool about that for me, not only uh, does it help me centralize what I have and I can archive and, and delete or whatever, but it also means that if somebody has a course Say they've created a course on Ride with GPS. You show up to a ride and they say, hey, we've changed the course. Cool, it's easy. I can go on to Ride with GPS on my phone. I can say, save this to my courses. And then I sync my device and now the course is in my device. With the Garmin, there's no such luck. If somebody doesn't have the ability to do a course transfer and happens to have the correct course on there, you're out of luck. 
This, I can do that when I show up to a ride with my phone in the field. I don't need a computer and it just works. It works well too. I'm going to point out just a few minor criticisms of the Wahoo and that's because I really only have a few minor criticisms of the Wahoo. Uh, first is that it actually takes a little while to start up. That's probably my biggest complaint, but to be honest with you, very rarely do I find it myself getting ready to do a ride and just at the last second turning it on. Usually I've, as I'm putting my bike together and getting ready to roll, I turn the unit on. But you can see I've pressed the power button and it's still firing up here. If I were to do the same thing with the Garmin, uh, this particular one starts up a little quicker. In fact, I've started it up well after the Wahoo. End. Oh, okay, there goes the Wahoo. And the Garmin usually starts up within maybe, yeah, there we go, five seconds or so. So the Garmin does start up faster, just be aware of that. The Wahoo does start up, what, in about 15, 20 seconds. Uh, that just means that if you are not quite ready to roll, I mean, if you're ready to roll right away, you're not gonna be quite ready with the computer, whereas you might be a little faster with the Garmin. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice between these units and uh, looking at something like uh, the 510 or 520, this is a black and white high contrast screen. This is a color screen. Um, comparing the two, honestly, I really don't care what color my screen is. <laughs> if I can see it, I can see it. I don't really care. Uh, the contrast on this is great, so it, if you need a color screen, great. Garmin's the way to go. If you don't need a color screen, you don't really care, the Wahoo is actually not a bad choice for that. In fact, the map screen itself has a very clear uh, and concise map, and of course I keep scrolling right past it, but uh, the map screen itself is actually very easy to read, and when you are in, uh, um, in a map mode where you're actually tracking the course, the, the directions are very clear. And I'll get to another thing, and that is the LEDs on the outside in just a moment, but it's very clear to see where you're going, and this thing alerts you quite well. Okay, thanks again for joining us for this review. Uh, there's a lot more things about these devices that I'd love to go into, but frankly, we need to be able to keep the review uh, time down. We don't want to bore you to death. Uh, so if you have any questions about the device, please put it in the comments. Either the Boogeyman or I will answer your questions because we've been using these and we really enjoy them. So uh, the price on this, $329 from any local bike shop. Uh, I strongly encourage you to consider it. If you're, not, if you're in the market for a, uh, a cycling computer, this is one to consider. So uh, again, highly recommend it. I really like it in comparison to any of the garments that are on the market right now. Again, thanks for visiting us and be sure to hit like and subscribe below.